Hello, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. You're having a good day so far. So I wanted to make a very highly requested video talking about wallpapers. Um, since I've gotten a couple types of comments very frequently, um, the first type being, what is your wallpaper? And the second type being, where did you get your wallpaper? So the, the first answer is just, I've been putting it in the description, the artist name, uh, the painting title, the date, if I can find it, or um, going forward, you know, if I ever use a photograph as a wallpaper, I'll put the photographer name. Um, but yeah, I've been putting uh, artist name in the description and specifically artist name rather than just linking it somewhere because I think that way you can go through and actually search paintings by that artist because I always find, you know, if I like one painting by an artist, if I like their style, um, I, I will probably like their other paintings. So um, I'm hoping that actually putting the artist name is a little bit more helpful than just providing a link. So there you go. You can you can actually search up the artist and learn about the artist. So um, that is about what the wallpapers are. Um, as to finding wallpapers, that is what I'm going to go through in this video. And I do also want to talk briefly about Piewall, which is the utility used to generate a color scheme from the wallpaper. So um, if I just do wall preview here, that's the color scheme generated from this water, uh, uh, wallpaper here. So that's pie wall, but I will I will talk about that briefly. It probably deserves its own video at some point, so I'm sure I will make another video about it eventually. But anyways, just going through how I find wallpapers. So first of all, for photos, I like, uh, you know, sites akin to Flickr, where it's user uploaded photos, because a lot of the time you're going to get more accurate search results for a term, and you're also going to get uh, high quality images, you know, either raw resolution images or uh, left at very high quality. Whereas if I just use a search engine, usually I'll get low quality images and then I'll have to like reverse image search it and sometimes I can't even find the original. So um, yeah, Flickr is pretty nice for this. There's a couple other sites that are, you know, similar sort of uh, user uploaded photos. Um, this one's nice. Yeah, super, super, super high quality image there. So yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what I use for photos. Um, as for paintings, which is what I'm sure a lot of you wanted to see, um, here is probably the best site I've found for looking at paintings, uh, Artv. I'll, I will put links to these in the descriptions, but this has, uh, yeah, literally 40k landscape paintings, and um, one of the nicest things about this site is when you click on a painting, so first of all, it's got high resolution uh, images available for download, and these are public domain, so it's literally, you know, free downloads right there on the site, uh, super high resolution, actually don't really like this painting that much, but uh, one of the nicest things about this site is it actually gives you a bio of the artist and then it shows you more artwork by that artist, which if you, like I said, you know, see one painting that you like, it's quite possible you'll like other paintings by that artist since a lot of the time, you know, it'll be similar style. Um, actually, yeah, a few of these I am liking. So it's great that this site, you know, gives you more paintings by that artist. So this is, I think, one of the best sites if you're looking for, you know, paintings for wallpapers. And of course, it has more than just landscape. It also has, you know, abstract, impressionist, etc. So this is a really nice site. Um, there's also sites uh, for actual museums that have scanned in their art. Uh, this is one of them. So National Gallery of Art. And I guess this is just scans of any paintings that have passed through their museum. Um, and like these, I was looking at this one, this is like insanely high resolution. Okay, this is super, super high resolution to the point where you would probably want to downscale it to use as a wallpaper. Um, but yeah, uh, really, really cool site to have since it's, you know, it tells you about the painting as well. It tells you the artist about the painting. And um, if you guys know of any more sites that are like archive collections of high resolution paintings, um, let me know in the description and I will in the description. Let me know in the comments and I will add to the description. Um, just be careful with uh, sending URLs in comments since I know YouTube will auto delete any comment with a URL. So just let me know the name and then I will put the URL in the description if it's, you know, a big archive of, of paintings. And um, because archives like these exist, I think it would not be really worth my time to make a uh, website hosting a collection of paintings just because this is, you know, a far bigger collection with far more information about each painting. So um, yeah, I'm not going to make a repo of wallpapers or anything just because of that. And also because, you know, photos often have, you know, copyright restrictions and such. So 
that's that. Anyways, um, on to Tin I for reverse image searching. Um, I really like, so, so the reason you might want to reverse image search if you happen to find a uh, wallpaper somewhere that you like, but it's, you know, low resolution, or maybe you want to find the name of the photographer or the name of the artist, etc. Um, if you can reverse image search, then you can find, you know, better resolution, um, where the original image was from, etc. So one of the ways to do that is Google reverse image search, which, uh, for obvious reasons, I do not like, um, Tin Eye seems to be a pretty good option because you can actually sort by biggest image, so you can sort by highest resolution, and um, usually it'll you know find where the original image was hosted. So that way you can find you know if it's on a photographer's website, uh, you can find their actual website and look through their photos. So that that is Tin Eye, and it also has a Firefox extension here. Uh, well, LibreWolf uh, as well, since you know same thing, but. Um, it's open source, so I figured it's worth uh, showing that it does have an extension. I haven't installed the extension, but yeah, I figured it's worth mentioning. Uh, you can just right-click to reverse image search, so that's pretty helpful. Anyways, so that is sort of how I find wallpapers, how to find wallpapers, some good sites. Like I said, if you guys know of other good sites, let me know in the description, um, in the comments, and I'll put it in the description. Anyways, on to Piewall. So this is the utility used to generate color schemes, and you can get it from Arch Repos. Um, yeah, it's just python pywall there, so that's pywall. Um, of course, you know, you can install it however you want. I'll link the, the GitHub for it in the description. It's, it's just a Python rewrite of the original wall utility, if anybody remembers that, so uh, that's pywall. Um, it also has a lot more features beyond just generating a color scheme and applying it to system colors. You know, it can also um, generate a color scheme, but allow you to set a background color or, um, well, actually, why don't I just do wall-h here? Th these are the main options for it. Um, one of the ways I like to do it. So if I just, here, I'll go set a wallpaper, actually. If I can type, that is. Um, if I do wall-i and then, um, give it a file, that'll set the wallpaper and the color scheme. I actually prefer to set the wallpaper with a different utility, uh, being X wallpaper, and there's lots of wallpaper setting utilities, you know, fe, etc. So, um, if you prefer to use your own utility to set wallpaper, you can just give wall the dash n flag, um, and then use your own utility. So, X wallpaper, zoom, um, and So if I go ahead and set that, that'll set the wallpaper and the color scheme, and I'll have to refresh the terminal here to get the new color scheme. And I'll also have to refresh DWM. So um, when I have a, a script set up for this, I will put any other refresh commands necessary um, to execute after uh, the original wall command is run. Uh, wall does also have a post command execution in configuration. So you can set that up if you have commands you need to execute, you know, after wall is ran. So um, that's pretty helpful. And yeah, you can see, you know, it generates a new color scheme from the current wallpaper. This is actually a really, really nice painting. Um, these mountains in the background is beautiful. So that is wall. And of course, you can set it up to uh, work with a bunch of other programs. Um, since it's doing system colors, uh, by default, it will just work natively with a bunch of programs. Uh, for DWM, for example, to get it to work, you'll need to install the X resources patch, and um, I will find the link for that and put it in the description. So that's just allowing DWM to use um, the X resources color scheme rather than the ones defined in the source. Um, for ST, simple terminal, it's going to be the same thing. You will want to set it up with X resources colors. Um, for Firefox and LibreWolf, for example, you can set it up uh, with an extension for those, so that way you will be using the colors defined by wall instead of, you know, whatever colors you had by default. Um, I personally don't really like that, so I haven't set that up. Uh, same thing with, like, NVIM, you can set it up to use the wall colors. I, again, I like having static colors for NVIM just because sometimes, you know, with wallpaper generation or wallpaper color generation, you'll get colors that maybe you don't necessarily want um, to be, you know, trying to find, you know, different pieces of code and syntax highlighting with this exact color scheme. So I like having static colors for some applications. But anyways, this is a ton of really good documentation on all sorts of applications and how to set up wall with them. Um, I figure since you guys seem to want more videos about like racing and stuff, I will probably make another video about Pywall at some point, you know, talking through more of how to set it up with different applications. 
Um, but you know, it's, it is all in the documentation here. So that's sort of, if you, if you want to figure out how to do it, read the documentation. Um, classic thing to say, of course. Anyways, um, hope you got something out of this video. Hope you learned about how to find nice wallpapers. Um, I will put, you know, links for everything in the description as usual. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you next time. Peace.